what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Supplements Comics, and we are here with a special episode of our podcast, Supplements Comics and Friends. Yes, we are going off schedule, bringing this one week early with this special episode because we have a special guest, and that is the head of CBCS, the president himself, Mr. Steve Barack. So we want to take this time to welcome you, Steve. And for our viewers that aren't familiar with you, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, um, like you mentioned, um, I'm president of CBCS and primary grader. Uh, I've been in comics uh, all my life. Uh, started the first certification service, our competition. Uh, set their standards uh, for the at the beginning. Uh, helped design everything from the holder to the label. Uh, getting people on board. Everybody said certification wouldn't work. Uh, had to really push to sell it. Of course, it took off like wildfire. Uh, got a little burnt out. Also, since I helped start the company, uh, they were never going to give me a piece of it. Um, so I left. I became the senior consignment director of Heritage, largest uh, comic seller in the world. Uh, I brought in millions and millions of dollars worth of art and um, comic books. Uh, and then I got a call. Uh, I got many calls, but turned them most, most of them down. Uh, but got a call about starting a service that would be hobby friendly and run with my standards. And I could make my crew. And that was, that's what became CBCS. And uh, it's taken off. Uh, people are using us, and it's fantastic. I'm having a great time. Well, we're oh, definitely yeah. privileged to have you here, it's so we can't say enough good things. And we have some great topics to discuss tonight on this podcast. The biggest one probably being the elephant in the room that a lot of people may or may not be aware of, but one of the biggest things that CBCS just announced was their version of the census. They call it the population report. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what are well, the plans for the future of the census? Sure. Well, I mean, the plans are to keep it growing, of course. The more books we get, the more books we add. Uh, one of the nice things about the census is it's going to help us uh, start collector sets. So people can compete with each other on having the best sets of different titles or number, you know, different kind of sets they want to make, like uh, Steranko covers or number one issues, anything that can uh, make people compete because um, they love it. Uh, so that's in phase two, right after the census. Very excited about that. Uh, very excited about launching the census so people see what we've graded and what we haven't um, to see what's out there uh, between our competition and our census you'll get a good feeling for what's out there, uh, which helps everybody make a decision on buying and selling. Um, after, the, after the collector sets, or some people call it the registry, um, I'm not sure we're gonna go from there. Uh, one, one step at a time, right? What's one the reception been like so far? On oh, that? fantastic. I mean, you know, there's some bugs, of course, whenever you launch something. Uh, but we're working on them. We have a, a report problem button on the census so people can say, hey, my book isn't on here or my book is on here, but it's been cracked out. I'll send you back the label, take it off the census. Um, but really, it's been great. Uh, been monitoring our chat boards um, at the CBCS forum and people are very happy. Uh, they love seeing their book as the highest graded or just even on there. Um, but uh, like I said, uh, we haven't had any negative responses except, you know, hey, can you fix this? Can you fix this? And of course, whenever you launch something, there's always something you, you didn't think about and you need to go fix. Well, that's real cool. We've definitely been talking about this, the CBCS census on several different programs here on the Simplements Comics YouTube cool. channel. Um, definitely glad to have you, Steve, in the building. Um, a little introduction. My name is Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. It's great to finally be sitting down here 
um, talking to you. And one of the things when you call yourself Mr. Bolo and you, you say that you're Mr. B on the lookout is people often come to you for advice on what, what, what they should do within the hobby. And one of the questions I'm commonly asked is, the grading companies, what is the discerning and deciding factors between the grading companies? So since we've got you here on the podcast, we've got you here on the YouTube channel, can you tell our viewers and our listeners why they should choose CBCS to get their books graded? Well, I think um, at the end of the day, we're a better company. Um, I think we're more hobby friendly. Uh, we have uh, programs that, uh, and um, ways of submitting that our competition doesn't. So like, let's take the points program. We have frequent flyer points that a lot of people might not know about. So every time you submit a book, you get points. And you can use those points to use as money for future submissions. So the more you submit, the more points you get. Um, it's something we feel we should pass on to the collectors in, in our hobby. Um, our case doesn't need uh, microchamber paper. Uh, it's archivally safe. It breathes. Um, the grading, uh, the feedback I'm getting on the grading has been fantastic. Uh, and uh, said so there's a bunch of programs uh, showing a blank now. We have a, a yeah, we have the art label uh, where we can. Uh, there's, there's, I feel that there's no reason for a grade on a blank cover when a, it's a fantastic piece of art. And let's say somebody like Stuart Sager, who's a great artist, but you know, manhandles the books because he's doing such incredible work. Um, why should it not sell as art and just get a 7-0, right? Because people are number crazy. So the art label came out so people can have this beautiful piece of art displayed they're not having a grade on it. It doesn't matter the grade. It's it's the only piece of that kind by that artist. Um, we we have um, the verified signature program, where signatures that weren't witnessed are verified by experts at BAS. Um, so if you have Jack Kirby signatures, Stan Lee, um, Alex Schomburg all these artists that you can't witness anymore, we can verify the signature if it's real. And sometimes the signature could be real, but because they lifted their hand or they coughed during the signature or somebody was trying to talk to them, we can't always verify the, that signature. We can't put a seal of approval on it. And there's, there's a bunch of, um, programs we have, they just have to go to our website uh, and look around. Um, and if you guys have me on some other time, we can talk more about those. Uh, is there any pro programs that you like that we have? Yeah, so one of the programs that Jack and I talk a lot, especially on our channel, is that verified signature program that you just talked about where we don't know of any other company that has that ability or is doing that right now where you can submit those older signatures or a signature that's not witnessed but still able to be verified and validated that it is accurate and authentic and then have it on a labeled comic just as you just said. That's one of our favorite ones. Oh, yeah, it's a great program, and people are using it like crazy. Now, the only yeah. thing that we, if I were to say I disliked about it, would be you're giving it a red label, which I don't think it should be a yellow label, but to me also, you know, I wasn't the best student in school, so whenever I see red, I... um. It says stop. It kind of has a negative yeah. connotation. Has there ever been any thought to changing that label or any change to that, that program? Or We have a meeting tomorrow. Oh. So you're the first ones to hear this. We have a meeting tomorrow about changing the uh, color of the label. I love it. I love it. Just such a small psychological move that I think will do a lot for the secondary market values of, uh, of those books because I agree. I think that's a competitive advantage that you guys have over everyone else. And you know, I mentioned to Brian, I myself am an owner of two signed books from uh, deceased creators with CC Beck and Michael Turner and would love to get those, um, would love to get those certified. And CBCS is the, is the, the best and only option 
in order to do that. So I, I definitely would love the change from the red label. Um, it, yeah, I think it almost gives that almost similar to a restored feeling where it just, it looks different from the rest of the labels in your collection. Um, right. Well, you know. yeah, at the beginning, you know, we only had certain colors to pick from. Right. And nobody wanted a green label. Mm -hmm. Right. Purple. Nobody wanted a purple label. So it kind of boxed us in. Yeah. But we're working through it. So similarly, you mentioned the art label. That's another label that I've only recently become familiar with, but one I'm actually a big fan of. I've seen this uh, doing a lot of conventions firsthand uh, when a, a lot of great artists, even something as simple as they handle the books uh, or the, you know, the paper that they're, they're, they've got so much going on at a convention. The overall condition isn't the first thought that they're coming up with. And just oh, some, and something as simple as that, I don't like the anxiety of having to watch a commissioned artist do work and then worry about them damaging the corners or something like that. When that right. should, as you mentioned, should not be the focus. So I think the art label is another great label that I think is under, kind of undervalued in the market. Uh, I think you guys have something great going there. And I hope to see that kind of expand throughout sure. time as well. Sure. And we hope so too. Uh, I think it's great though that we, you know, we can also take you know, a backing board that somebody gave to an artist to draw on and we can put it in the art label. I was gonna ask you that, what kind of items uh, can, can you get into that art label? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Um, it has to fit in the, it has to fit in the holder. So basically a comic book size piece of paper, essentially, right, or, but it can or be board. Okay. Right. Um, it, I mean, we've gotten stuff in that's, you know, three inches by three inches. Yeah, like almost a cut signature of, of something or, or something or other. Well, just, you know, the, the artist doodled on something and, you know, mm -hmm. or sketched on something and somebody sent it in um, and just put it through art. Yeah, I think it's really um, a good thing for the hobby. So I have another question kind of off that art label some of the questions we also get from our viewers is the bigger sized or the treasury edition or magazine yeah. sized so I, get right now. That, I get that all the time mm. uh, magazine holder is uh, being uh, discussed and worked on um, not sure of the date yet so I don't want to lie to anybody and give out a date uh, but you know that's the next phase and what we're doing, tooling costs are very, very expensive. Uh, and then the plastics and the molding and uh, the interior well that houses it, you have to have different sizes. It's a very, very, very expensive uh, thing to do. Um, but we're looking forward to doing it. Uh, actually, we were measuring um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, one, two, three, and four. Uh, and it looks like they'll be able to fit into the regular size comic holder if we can make the well that holds, you know, the archival well that holds the comic just a little bigger. Um, and that's another first you're hearing here. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. We want to give the collectors and, of course, you know, the sellers as many options as possible. Hey, it's well, that's one more reason to to again to use CBCS versus going to another company is you know if you can eliminate those individual items that um, were ungradable that that's going to only do further um, it's only going to do more to further your kind of share of the market there so and not just that it's to help the hobby yes 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 absolutely I mean, when we do the magazine holder it's not going to make us money for years. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's hobby friendly and we want people to be happy. Um, I'm a collector first or a hobbyist first and everything I think about, I think, which is, is this good for the business and for the hobby, not just what's good for the business. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, when we let people know, uh, we let our community know that you were going to be on the channel, that we were going to be doing this interview uh, and, and have you on the Simple Ninja Friends uh, 
podcast, one of the consistent questions that we got bombarded with it, that people wanted to know from you is, will CBCS ever offer special character editions or branded style logo labels um, that have been popularized uh -huh. through the convention scene um, from other grading companies? And, and I think the CBCS fans out there want to know if they, they could ever see something like that in the future. It's a possibility. My big thing is that the label shouldn't take away from the comic. That's a great point. And you're buying the comic. You love the comic. Um, the label should give you information. But your eye should go to the comic because that's what you love, um, hopefully. Um, so right now, we're not looking into it at all. Uh, further down the road, we get enough requests. It looks like it'll be worth doing. Who knows? But my personal opinion is that, like I said, the label should not take away from the comic book. I like that. I think that's, I think that's a, a very good response to, um, to that question because I know that, that it's kind of become the cool thing. But I often have felt like that gets kind of almost overblown. I certainly would never want to see a day in the hobby where somebody is maybe spending more for one book versus another um, because of, say, like a, a logoed label when it's right. the same book. Um, you know, that would, I think we've gone too far at that point uh, with me, me even almost getting down price manipulation um, rather than letting kind of the mar open market decide. But, um, but still, I have to admit a lot of those, those cases do, be, uh, do look very cool. But I think that's a great, great response and, and always about the hobby and the health of the hobby. Yes. And that's one thing I, I, I like. We've had multiple conversations with you now, Steve. I had the, the privilege of hosting um, a Hero Initiative panel with you, which we enjoyed. And that's, you're a big proponent of Hero Initiative. You support Hero Initiative. Oh, huge. Friends of us support Hero Initiative. And we're in that into a little bit. But through that conversation, the conversations I've had with you, you're a comic book collector first that became a grader, which is one of the reasons we really – like you but you're, you have a business and with that being said the fanboy in you and the business combined together there's bound to be some awesome comics that have crossed your desk for grading can you share with us any stories of what some of the books that you know when you saw you were just wild and, and surprised and in amusement and and just almost didn't want to grade it because you just wanted to sit there and admire it for a longer period of time well yeah i mean we got in uh Two unknown copies of Suspense 3, which has that great, unbelievable Schomburg cover. By the way, it's probably one of the worst comics ever written. When I got my first copy, which was low grade um, back in the day, I read it. I couldn't believe how bad it was for such an unbelievable cover. And uh, we got in two pedigree copies that were unknown and uh, where they were. Um, and they sold for almost a quarter of a million dollars a piece which was fantastic. Um, I think Heritage sold them. And uh, that, was, that was really special. Um, what's really neat for me is seeing a book I've never seen, or a book I've never seen in high grade, which is rare. Uh, I've seen so many action ones, Detective 27s, but you know, I, I get some esoteric book that I only saw once, in mid grade and all of a sudden it's a nine six or something like that it kind of blows my mind that you know in the many many years that i've been doing this that i've never seen one like that that's real fun i mean on instagram i post uh every day or every other day cool books that hit my grading desk um mm -hmm. it could be anything from uh an action one of course uh but to something like uh i I think I posted the other day uh, that really cool cover of Avengers with Frankenstein and everybody on it um, because I loved, I loved it as a kid and I got a super high grade copy in and I posted it and I do the same thing on the CBCS forums cool books that hit my grading desk because I get to be a kid it's fantastic um, I think you know if you you know you become an adult but you stay a child in the love for this hobby it's just so much better um i i go through uh books every day that everybody would say they're commons 
Um, I enjoy myself. I don't care if it's an FF18 in good. I still think it's a cool comic. Um, I'm very lucky that way. Um, does that help answer the question? Yes. yes. It does, and it further illustrates the fact that that's why we enjoy CBCS and you, because you have that love for the hobby embedded in, in your DNA. And you mentioned one place where it really comes through, and that's in your social media um, activity on your, uh, on your accounts. Um, talk to us about the importance of that. You've been able to really put a face to the CBCS brand. And some people who maybe before they're familiar with CBCS, they become familiar with you on social media. And we've heard from people all over the place that they get a big kick out of when, whether it's a comment on their posts, when they post a book or oh, some gr nice. great posts that you're making um, and they're able to interact with you. So tell us about the importance of that, that social media interaction because well, that's the world Brian and I come from. Sure. Well, as hobbyists, we need to stay in touch with each other. The community is what's important. And so I don't even, when I post, uh, the books aren't even graded. They hit my grading desk. I take mm -hmm. my phone out. I take a picture. Um, so I'm not even trying to promote the book in a slab. I'm just trying to say, hey, look what hit my grading desk. This is cool. I hope you enjoy it too. When I'm on Instagram, if somebody posts something really cool, why wouldn't I, you know, say, hey, this is a great book. Make them feel good about the book. I know if I was posting something that I loved, I would hope that people would enjoy it and make comments as well. So I should do the same. And that simple <laughs> comment is so effective. I do think it makes people's day. It makes people feel noticed. And a lot of us, our collecting habits become very um, kind of insulated, like we we're just collecting by ourselves. So that opportunity to show off, which Instagram provides this great opportunity to be like, look at this great book, for other people to see uh, these amazing things that we each own. So then to have somebody who we all know sees incredible book after incredible book, then appreciate a post that you make, I think it, it resonates with people. And then that in turn earns you goodwill within whether that's the intended result or not, earns you no, goodwill. No, I'm just, trying, just having community. fun in the hobby. Right, right, right. And that's the beauty of it is, is when you do the right thing, you do, you know, that the thing people talk about, that comic karma, um, but it's often misused. And the reality is that's where it comes in, is if you do the right thing and you have fun and you're, and you're, you're putting good stuff out, then that, that's what's going to come back to you. And we've, we've seen that love. We've even talked over the last couple of weeks about um, the, the differences in grading companies. We've tried to really go into what it is that our viewers are seeing when they're making their grading decisions. And mm -hmm. I tell you, this is, at, at the Sippelman's Comics and Friends podcast, this is, this, this is where we got to keep it real. This is that portion of the show. So we're a secondary market-driven show. Our channel, a lot of people, uh, you know, they come to us for that, that sort of discussion. And one of the things that people have talked about but have been excited to see the gap closing is the gap between the secondary market pricing of the market leader CGC for, and then you guys. Sure. Well, they had a 15-year lead. Yes. And right? if, do you think it's just – is it just a matter of that, right? Is it just a matter of – of public knowledge of the product and then the time it takes to grade enough books where you can get that market share or are the things that you can do to try or that you are doing to actively try to close that gap? I think it's a bunch of everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that being hobby friendly is really important and it's really pushed us to where we are today. Uh, but it's also a business, like you said. So we have to come up with things like the census and then coming up with collector sets, um, uh, the verified signature program, uh, all of that. The points program where we're saying, hey, you're spending your money with us. Why shouldn't we give you something back? Right? Um, it's, it, once again, it's a community. And if we treat it like a community of the hobbyists, We'll all have more fun. I like that. That's where a lot of our values and your values kind of align is we often talk on here about, hey, amplifying your comic book collection through integrity and community 
those both things are paramount and CBCS seems to share those same core values as well, which is what we love CBCS for, for that reason, along with exceptional grading. And we've talked about it before. I tend to think CBCS grades a little bit harder than, than CGC or, or your competitors. I think we, we grade um, consistently, mm -hmm. which I think is most important. I mean, the toughest grader and the loosest grader are both just as bad, right? That's, that is an awesome point. That needs to be amplified right there. The toughest grader and the loosest grader, they're just as bad. Right. That's awesome. Consistency is king. Yes. It really needs to be, you know, you want to be able to send in a book and know that you're in the strike zone. If you mm -hmm. think it's an 8.0, it should come back a 7.5, an 8, or an 8.5. Unless, of course, you don't know how to grade, but that's different, right? Or you miss something, right? I mean, um, light stains, people miss quite a bit. And we see them, and we have to downgrade for it. Um, we have a, what well, we have next to the grade sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed it, but there's a check mark which means the book looks better than the given grade. Please check the graders notes. And by the way, we give our graders notes out for free. You don't have to pay for membership. You don't have to own the book. It could be anybody's book. And we put the QR, um, we put a QR on the back of the label. So if you're at a convention and you're not sure why the book graded the way it did, you could put your phone up to it, click on the QR and the graders notes come up for free. There is no charge because uh, imagine paying your mechanic $600 to fix your car. And when you ask him, what did you do to my car? He says, Hey, give me a little extra money and I'll tell you. Yeah. I'd be a little bummed. Yeah. I'd be plus, a lot bummed. Plus too. that helps people out is they can check those grading notes and see if maybe then any of those defects might be pressable or something Absolutely. that they could do something sure. to bump that grade up. And I think, and I think educated uh, submitters turn into more active submitters because, Absolutely. you know, they're less likely to get dejected by the process if they send in a book that they think is a 9-0 and it comes back a, a 6-0. And if that happens, they, you know, you start to get that jaded boo bird feeling where it's like, oh, I don't like grading and never, you know, it doesn't work out how I think it is when in reality, there are some skills that they need to develop and being able to develop those skills uh, sure. and educate I mean, themselves only helps your process as well. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we put um, a guide to grading on our website. Um, it's uh, just a guide, kind of helps you understanding where you, you know, what you can expect when you're sending in a book. We think that's very helpful. We did that not to make money. We did to make sure somebody didn't send in a book that they think is a 9-0 that's gonna get a 4-5, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, once again, it goes back to helping the hobby and making it a better place. Now, a couple of questions ago, we, I, gotta, I gotta backtrack this a step because you mentioned <laughs> a little nugget of information that I think some of our viewers may have missed. You mentioned pedigrees. And I know yes. in 2019, you guys added the pedigree program. Uh, talk a little bit about that and, and how that's, that's worked out. You also mentioned the message boards. I was on the CBCS message boards. People seem to love the pedigree program. Yeah, I mean, well, there's no really program. Mm -hmm. It's just that if um, we get in pedigrees, uh, like the Edgar Church, Mile Highs, the Riley, San Francisco's, uh, Crippen, D-Copies, anything we make sure we notate it on the label we have one of the top experts in the world west Stefan, uh grading for us and he's he's amazing at pedigrees uh he's he and i have both owned incredible amounts um but if a collection comes through that's original owner bought off the newsstand or at the comic shop and there's no secondary uh, buying from dealers or friends or whatever, uh, it could get a pedigree. If it's high grade enough, it's large enough, has the keys, but there's, there's a lot of rules, but people can contact us directly to see if their collection is worth pedigreeing. That's cool. That's, we also, that, I, I didn't know that. That's interesting. We also put um, from the collection of, in case it's not 
worthy mm -hmm. of pedigree, but it's a special collection, we'll notate that it's from a certain collection, which you know separates it from pedigree status, but that's still really cool. Yeah, I'm sure it means the world to the family or the person who has put that collection together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So at the beginning of the show, we talked about the census. Then we also talked about how the verification label is being changed. Is there any other features that's coming up from CBCS that us or our viewers should be aware of? Sure. Um, the big move is there's a new holder coming out. Uh, we were supposed to launch it about 11 days ago. But because of everything that's going on in the country, our printer got shut down and the labels haven't come in yet. So that should be coming fairly soon. Um, I know everybody's waiting for it. It's still crystal clear. It's still the same PETG on the interior label, uh, interior well, excuse me. Um, uh, we're gonna tweak the label a little bit and um, make it more tamper evident. Tamper evidence, one thing, but we also know people that like to crack slabs, press them, and resubmit them. Will they still be allowed to do that? Will it be harder with these new holders? or It'll be a little harder with these new holders, but still openable. Because we had to leave room for um, the books to breathe. Books oh, to you can't have those Newton rings. rings. Yeah, you oh, can't no have those Newton, Newton rings. rings. Yes. No Newton rings. Uh, that is reason enough for me to go to CBCS, is the avoidance of Newton rings. Well, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're very big on avoiding Newton rings. Yes, yes. If you're not familiar out there uh, in the Simpleman's Comics uh, community. I got oil slick on my book. Yeah, Newton rings. It's hard to describe, but it's that almost that like multicolored fluorescent uh, uh, circles that go around some slabbed books where the book is just being pressed too hard by the case and you're getting that almost contact. And uh, it is very unappealing. And we've seen ones that are terrible. Uh, where the entire front of the book, especially on these modern books where you're getting those slick and glossy covers. Um, yep. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's what people love about our holder. Yeah. It's crystal clear. I mean, you see the book the way it is. You need anti-glare so it's easier to take a picture with without seeing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Make no promises. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Steve? You mentioned a lot here today. We talked about you know, the art label, we talked about the, the verified signature label, we talked about that pedigree label, we talked about everything going on with the census, we talked about everything going on uh, in CBCS in general, and the, the fact that there's a lot happening, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of positivity going on in the market, and you talked about, you know, being all about integrity and community, and that's what we're really all about as well here at Simple Men's Comics, and that's why it's really this, this, it, this interview, this episode, it was awesome, but it was all kind of a ruse to get you here to make this announcement to our community that we have partnered up with CBCS and are humbled to be able to represent the CBCS brand as spokesmen here on the Simple Ones Comics YouTube channel. So, Steve, thank you very much for the opportunity, and we look forward to amplifying the brand throughout our community and the entire comics community in general. Well, thank you. I'm quite humbled that uh, you all feel that way. Yeah, like we said, we, we felt we've had this discussion. We share a lot of the same values. So we're super excited to announce yes. this partnership with CBCS. And not only that, but Steve has been nice of enough to give our community a promo code. Right, Jack? Yes, yes. So we will have a promo code. I'm sure Brian's flashing it up on the screen right now. 15% uh, off. It, you just got to put it on your submission form. Uh, it's good through the end of May. Uh, and, you know, go ahead and get those submissions in. It's on your general uh, grading, so it will not include your signature stuff or uh, any of the kind of like premium products or shipping. But 15% off your total grading, courtesy of Steve from CBCS, right here with Simpleman's Comics. And the code is? Simple Man's Comics, of course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and once again, it has to be postmarked by the end of May. 
So we're really excited about this partnership. We only want to get involved with brands that have the same values and add to the community, not take away. CBCS is the antithesis of this. This is going to be an amazing relationship. And we hope to bring you, the comics community, so much more content surrounding the entire grading encapsulation process, help you out with making your grading decisions, what books to get graded, uh, what are the various services available to you, and so on and so forth. And we hope that this is only the beginning of a prosperous and great relationship. But let us know out there, Simpleman's Comics community, let us know in the comments section what kind of content do you guys want to see surrounding CBCS? What are the burning questions that you didn't get answered in this episode that you need us to get for you? I'm sure this will just be part one of a future series with Steve here at the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. So let us know how you feel. We are really excited about this partnership, and we hope that each and every one of you out there in the Simpleman's Comics family feels the same way. Yeah, so we definitely have future content planned to highlight CBCS. That'll be coming up as well. And we will be speaking about CBCS naturally throughout some of the videos that we already create. Plus, we'll be sharing it across our social network and with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and such like that. Because CBCS, you've heard us talk about a bunch of times on this channel. We're thrilled to be working with them. And do not forget that discount grading code, Simple Man's Comics. As long as you put it on your submission form, by the end of May, you'll get that discount. Once they get it received, right, Steve? Yes. And um, once again, guys, I'll be more than happy to come back on. You guys are great. Um, and so if you have a lot of questions from the people that are watching the podcast, be happy to answer anything. Um, I'm a pretty much an open book. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Don't worry. We'll definitely have you on this channel again. But we've talked earlier in this show about Hero Initiative. Can you tell us a little bit more about Hero Initiative and your involvement with such a great organization? Sure. This is something near and dear to my heart. And I think it's uh, fantastic for the hobby. Um, I'm on the board of Your Initiative. Uh, if you go to hearinitiative.org, you can find out more about us. It's a real charity. We only have two salaries, and they're not very high. We do not put the money into other things. The, our office for the two employees is the coffee shop around the corner. So we don't have to spend money on rent. Um, and we raise money for artists and writers uh, who are unable to support themselves anymore, um, who have given us so much joy and so much love. Uh, I, I can't say enough about this great organization. Uh, I joined because of what they were doing and said, let me help, please. I want to help. Um, they do so much to the community, uh, even if you go to their website and you donate one dollar, if everybody donated a dollar, it would help out for the people who gave you so much enjoyment over the years, uh, whether it's for their medical, housing, food, um, there's so many older creators out there that never made the kind of money that the creators they're seeing now from movies and TV and uh, it's a real shame that they have to live that way. And I always believed, I always say this, it's, this, it's my same war cry, that if I was a, ever uh, in need of charity and I would take it, then why shouldn't I give it? Not just money, but my time. And you don't have to give money, you could also give time to the Hero Initiative. Uh, just, you know, write to them, say, hey, I'd like, to donate my time, I live here, we'll see what you can do for us. But it's a fantastic, fantastic place. I, ca I, I can't go on enough about it. Um, and I probably have gone on too long about it. <laughs> you still have to excuse me. No, I mean, we've, we've helped out with the Hair Initiative here and also friends of our channel, the Comic Accord, they're big involved in Hair Initiative. So it's definitely a great organization. And we have a link up on the screen right now, and we'll also put a link for Hero Initiative in the description of this video as well. Wonderful. Well, usually this is the time in each episode where we thank the guests, but this week we have just one guest, the man of honor, Steve Borak. Thank you so much for joining us today, and 
thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to represent CVCS on the YouTube comic community. And we appreciate you coming and giving us all these nuggets of great information and just talking comics with the comics community. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on. It means a lot. Um, you know, I'm just another hobbyist. So it's kind of strange sometimes being invited onto these podcasts, but I always have such a great time. And you guys have made me feel really great. And uh, I really hope this helps you out. And I'm sure it'll help us out too. We're definitely looking forward to it. And on behalf of Steve, Jack, and myself, this has been another episode of Simple Man's Comics and Friends.